Okay, let's spin up the precision compass first. And let's place our compass on our new DMM. On the top of this neodymium is a ring magnet and the base here we have a 2 by 2 by 1 inch neodymium iron boron we're able to reproduce the same results using the ferro cell which shows you the hypertrochoid pattern of magnetic reciprocation using light but you're able to see it here as well on the base of the compass it will draw out a hypertrochoid pattern along on the face of the magnet, if I had a, a very, very tiny pin in the base of that, you would actually see that. Additionally, there is a incredible stability in the compass because right now what you crudely call attraction, we got dielectric voidance, we have unlike polarities between the top of the compass where I have the ring magnet and the other neodymium. Both of these are neodymiums. But if you look closely, you will see that there is a hypertrochoid pattern being drawn on the face of the magnet. What you'd crudely call a spirograph pattern is the necessitated toroidal vortex of the reciprocating hyperboloid, which is nature's sphere, would be an inverse sphere, is a hyperboloid. That is necessitative magnetic uh, divergence, closed loops of... Uh, magnetic reciprocation. This is a precision compass. The stability, look how great the stability is on this compass. I'm actually holding here in case it falls as it spins down, but it has incredible stability and it only has this stability because I have uh, one magnet attached on the compass and the uh, other magnet under dielectric voidance of so these two magnets are coming together under dielectric voidance. So, you've never seen this before. So I'm able to reproduce the hypertrochoid pattern. Look, and I have not spun the compass up again. I mean, incredible stability. And the only way you can achieve this is between two magnets. I mean, this isn't, well, it is a precision compass. It's not an extreme military grade precision compass. So, let me uh, spin it up again some more for you. This time the opposite direction. By spinning up the uh, brass mass of the gyroscopic flywheel in the opposite direction, I'm able to draw out a hypertrochoid in inverse pattern. However, you'll notice something different. But I haven't told you. Let's see if you can get it. Remember, all atoms are polarized. A magnet is definitionally a mass of polarized atoms that are not only obviously so polarized, but also coherent. That is the only thing that differentiates a magnet that's been pulsed or induced from either a magnetizer coil or a stroke of another magnet. So you're going to talk about polarization but also coherency. So you'll see the hypertrochoid pattern in inverse due to inverse spin of the brass gyroscopic flywheel, the main mass obviously. I have incredible long-lived stability. There's nothing in this experiment other than a quasi-precision gyroscope, a $1 ring magnet, and a $50 neodymium iron boron. There's nothing here. The whole thing is resting, obviously, on a box of Triscuits. <laughs> There's nothing else here other than the gyroscope and the two magnets. The total here between the magnets and the gyroscopes, the two magnets and the gyroscopes, is about $110. But importantly, the hypertrochoid pattern of magnetic reciprocation is being drawn out. Like I said, if there was a pin there, you'd be able to see it. Is being drawn out 
on the face of the block magnet by the base of the compass. So, I've got a lot more videos, a lot more, including a couple interesting discoveries which I knew existed but I had to find the right way to find them including another experiment where I'd like to get to this but I'm not going to show you how I'm able to change the weight of this compass Let me zero it out. Able to change the weight of this compass from its current weight to another weight by changing magnetic polarity and the introduction of a coil. Did I say that correctly? Yes. I'm able to change the weight of this compass the ultimate weight of the entire system actually, but the only thing that's being changed is this compass. You have to take into consideration the entire weight of the system. I'm able to change the weight of this using three magnets and a coil and absolutely no input other than the uh, spin up to the uh, brass flywheel. I'm sure you're eager to see that. So, I showed you something new. I was able to show you um, hypertrochoid, hyper, uh, hyperboloid, that's a mouthful, hypertrochoid, hyperboloid processional reciprocation being drawn out physically using the base of a compass, or what you'd cruelly call a spirograph pattern, being drawn out on the base of that compass due to magnetic dielectric voidance, or what you'd cruelly call magnetic attraction. Same thing as seen using light. LED light, it doesn't have to be LED light, the same thing seen using light in the ferrocell invention. Except here we have no light, what is drawing the hyperboloid, the hypertrochoid pattern is the base of this compass. You're able to see it. So, a macrocosmic model of geromagnetic processional hypertrochoid reciprocation being drawn out by the base of a compass on the top of a large magnet due to this ring magnet here, it's just taped there, and that two inch block magnet. Many, 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 many more videos to come. I've got some fascinating stuff to show you. I'm busting my fanny on the book. It's about six o'clock in the morning. I've been experimenting all night. I blew my own mind yesterday on a discovery. and. Uh, I'm so wound up I haven't slept in two days because of the discovery, so wonderful news. Great stuff. You've seen something new. I was able to show you the hypertrochoid in another way, so I hope you like it.